Well, let's start. Uh, today, uh, I will I bring to you this um, study that I made last year about uh, the FFmpeg using the overlay in the GPU. What we will see uh, today, it will be uh, what we can do with the GPUs in FFmpeg, a very fast forward because it's uh, uh, like a resume about the previous presentation I made about the same topic uh, the years before. Uh, later about the GPU overlay, what is the overlay filter, some tests, and the advantage and disadvantage that have over the traditional method and how to implement this in OpenCast, a very fast and concise uh, way to do it. Okay, uh, as today, uh, normally uh, with a GPU, you can accelerate these kind of things in a video when you are processing, resizing it, changing the resolution, cropping it so you can cut a part of the video, uh, Re-encode it, uh, of course, so to change from MP4 to H H265, or even to transpose the video inside of a box. Um, but uh, you can't uh, apply some filters like a color filter, a noise filter, generate a noise uh, video, backgrounds, etc. You can't do that with a GPU. You can only do that uh, using the CPU. But now, uh, since uh, the latest version of FMPEG, FFmpeg from the last year, we can now use the overlay filter. Many of you are uh, asking, what is the overlay filter? Well, the overlay filter is very simple. Allows to put one video or image up on top of another. We can see here we have a, the more traditional way that is a picture and picture that we can have a video inside another video. And we can have another way that is the side by side video that we use two videos and we mix together to make only one video. That uh, is very useful, for example, when you have a presentation and the presenter in the other side and you need to mix the two streams together. Uh, okay, so to do this in FFmpeg, uh, there is uh, two ways that you can do this. Uh, first, one way, for example, with the side-by-side -side video is to use the same, the, the new filter, the overlay filter. Uh, or the traditional way. And I will show the both so we can see the differences. This is, is the traditional way. Uh, and this is the way that uh, OpenCast used to recreate the, the previews, the preview for the video editor. First, we have the two videos and we made a filter, a filter complex that uh, the first video is resized to 640 by 360, and we create a padding. This padding is to create a space uh, besides the another video, so we can add the second video. Here we are at a resizing the second video, and then we made the overlay one over the another. Finally, we made the, the mix of the audio, and then we re encoded the video. That is the traditional way to do that. Now, uh, the using the new method that it's using the GPU, you use uh, the same regular uh, commands for uh, using a GPU that it's uh, the activate the hardware acceleration, says that, that the output of this video uh, from the video that you are input, it will be in format CUDA for each of the two videos. And then we uh, start to make the new video. First, we uh, asked for the scaling MPP. 
NPPs for uh, resizes on the GPU and, and make with the with the format of color uh, desired. Then we do this that it's hardware download. What is uh, says this that we have to put this uh, back to the memory. And then why we do that because. Uh, we can do that a padding to make a space to the video because uh, the overlay uh, CUDA it's only for overlay one video to another. So we made a new space for the video for the another video using the CPU. When we finish that um, process, the the new video with the space we upload again to the GPU. And then we made the overlay with this uh, with the second video. Here is, and this is, is the important uh, part, this overlay CUDA. And then we mix the, the audio output and remix and uh, recode the video to H264 with the GPU. Uh. Uh, here is a test with side by side video. Let me if I can show you to you, but I think yeah, it didn't load at the video. Um, I think I can't share the screen. Oh, one moment. Uh, it's asking me for some uh, rights on the OS. Oh. Mm -hmm. Here is. Okay. I think is now here. We can see here that the quality is practically the same. This is the, with the CPU, the very normal. Uh, and you have to count that uh, I'm a streaming and a streaming, so uh, you will not see the final. <laughs> quality because uh, it's degrading over the streaming of this presentation. And this we have the another one that is with the GPU. If you see the quality is the same. There's no no such a very noticeable change about that. Okay. Uh, where is the presentation? Yeah. So what about the the numbers? If we see the numbers uh, with with these two presentations, we can see that the GPU mode makes a uh, more kilobits per uh, uh, is a higher bit rate than the CPU mode, and that is not very e efficient. And that is a known uh, cause that uh, that the GPU mode made a very a little more bigger videos in this case. But normally, uh, where is uh, amends this the GPU? It's using the the speeds. But in this case, the overlay speed is not so fast that the normally encoding speed. The encoding speed normally is three times faster than the speed that we we see here. Here it's only 10x versus 7.45x in the CPU mode. That if we have uh, encoding a two-hour video, this only means that uh, the GPU will be fast only by six minutes. Then. We have another, uh, I will show you first. 
we have the another uh, comparison that is using the uh, picture and picture. In this composition, it's very different. We are using a background and we put the another two videos over this uh, base and background. And then we added a, a, an image that is the logotype from the universities in this case. But in this case, the overlay CUDA filter is not so great in this case because it's not so mat mature uh, because it cannot uh, handle a uh, very images uh, images at the background. So what we can do in this case? In this case, we have to create with the padding the color and make the the background using the the padding from the first one. So we scale the video, we add the padding to using the another video with the CPU, and then uh, we use uh, we resize the video and we reposition the video. Here in the overlay CUDA, it's the the part that I re. Uh, positioned each video. And well, and with the and there is another mode. In this case is an hybrid mode. Why an hybrid mode uh, instead to use the only CPU mode? Because uh, in this case the CPU has very bad uh, time uh, using this uh, this time, uh, this type of uh, processing, it's very slow when you try to overlay a lot of uh, videos at the same time. But uh, with an every mode, uh, we can compensate that. We can use the CPU only for the overlay, and then the uh, GPU only for resize and for uh, re-encoding the video. In this case. We we put the we decode the two videos using the GPU, then rescaling the videos with the GPU, and then download it, the videos back to the CPU. Then the CPU makes all the overlying stuff with each of the videos, plus the background and the banner that it's in the uh, higher part, and then. Uh, we upload the videos at the end back to the GPU, the only one video to be re-encoded to the desirable uh, size and bit rate. Here is the, the difference. If you see the with the GPU, we only manage to have the background with the same color, but we can use an image like in this case. And also the you can as you can see the logo, the logo type uh, is in a better match shape than the logo in the the banner in the hybrid mode. Here are the the tests with the, oh, sorry, it was the picture and picture video. Uh, we have the differences. It's not so much, it's almost similar as the side by side video. And how are we, oh, we are with the time, we are, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so what we can have the conclusions here, we can have the GPU have a high parallel links with the GPU. That is the greatest advantage because we can uh, process several videos and we will have still the same 10x of relative speed. But with the GPU, with the CPU, if we use that for the overlay, with if we have a high load of videos, the performance will be very, uh, very um, hit with this uh, high load. But the disadvantage about this overlay CUDA filter is that not all the video format are support. 
At the moment, it's not possible, Bill, to use an image as a background. Okay, yeah. And some images won't work. So finally, if you want to uh, implement this in OpenCast, it's very easy. Even for any of the modes I show you, even the hybrid mode, First, you have to compile or install FFmpeg version with CUDA drivers. Uh, there is a lot now, a lot of resources. Even there is Docker machines, uh, not Docker machines, do uh, yeah, Docker uh, containers that you that can uh, build this FFmpeg and give you the binary ready. Why you have to build this? because licensing issues with the NVIDIA libraries. Then you have to insert the FFM code that I, I show here in a shell code file in a part that it's reachable for the OpenCast user. Then add this to the file, uh, the OpenCast Pro execute service implementation, and then write the uh, the ex write and execute work workflow operation handler to the OpenCast workflow. And the conclusions that we have, it's the GPU overlay can manage, uh, can make overlays, some functions that are not available. The performance is not so great that is when only resizing or encoding, but this method can be, can take adv advantage of the high parallel links that a uh, GPU provides. And finally, for advanced compositions, uh, I recommend you to use a hybrid method that the CPU plus GPU. Um, that is all. 